the other people were in the Karma speech. All right, Hannah is giving speech number four, how to say it. And oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speech number four is all about words, specifically selecting the right words and having concise meaning. So her objectives are select the right words and sentence structure to communicate her ideas clearly, accurately, and vividly to use rhetorical devices to enhance and emphasize ideas, and to eliminate jargon and unnecessary words, and perhaps throw in some correct grammar. And I asked Hannah to remember the summers, and she said, I love summer, because for me it's time to travel. I have been to the most memorable places on my summer vacations, including Norway, Taiwan, London, and China. In two weeks, I will be going to Alaska. The summer adventure tradition continues. Welcome, Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Hannah Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. Someone once told me the best days of school are your first day and your last day. As thousands of high school and college graduates have finished walking across the stage and received their diplomas, I can't help but reminisce and remember my first, very first day at the University of Texas. Of the horns. <laughs> Though a good beginning can make for a good ending, my beginning was marked by anxiety and fear bordering on terror as I entered the brave new world of college. The first thing I remember about my first day of school actually began at freshman orientation a month in advance. The instant my finger clicked the submit button and I registered for the, my first college courses, I began planning out and mapping all the routes I could possibly take to my classes, to and from my dorm. <laughs> well, I signed up for five classes that semester, so I assigned each, each uh, class <coughs> A different, uh, different fluorescent colored marker, and I intricately and pedantically uh, mapped my routes to and from class using the bus routes and the most walkable um, areas. Needless to say, by the end of the, the, the exercise, it looked more like a two-year-old's finger paint picture rather than a helpful aid. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, I studied that map day in and day out up until the first day of class like my life and college career depended on it. The next memory about my first day of school was the actual first day of class. It was pouring down rain with a tropical monsoon. I remember watching John Wayne movies with my dad where they talked about a cloudburst, a sudden torrential rain that turned dirt roads into swamps and town streets into rivers. Well, that's what this was like. Except it wasn't sudden and it wasn't brief. And in a place like Texas, where it is as hot and dry as a cracker on a cookie sheet in the middle of August, a part of me wondered if the end of times were upon us. As I stood, as I stood out at, the last, at my last class, looking through the glass window, thinking about how I was going to get home in this rain, the only thing I could, I could think of was to, I needed to walk home. But fortunately, I had memorized my map, right? <laughs> well, somewhere in between the first day of class, and all the excitement, I had forgotten all those, all those colored roots. So I decided I'm just going to have to make my way back the best I could. After all, I, was, was, I might have been a city girl, but I wasn't afraid of getting wet. As I walked back to my dorm, I just got the sense that a police car was following me, inching up on me like a snail. I must have looked over my shoulder about five or six times, trying to convince myself that that police car was not following me. But I couldn't deny it when the police officer pulled up, flashed his lights, and rolled down his window very slowly. Excuse me, miss, where are you headed to? Um, Scottish Rite Dormitory, I timidly replied. Oh, wow, you are a long way from where you need to be. Why don't you hop in, he replied cheerfully. <laughs> Relief washed over me like a tidal wave from my head down to my feet. So I opened the back door, because where else do you sit in a police car? <laughs> and crammed my, back, my, or my backpack in. The officer turned back around, made a U-turn. I was that far off course. And before I knew it, we were pulling up to my dorm. So there I was, sitting in the 
back seat of a police car on the first day of school <laughs> for the entire world to see. <laughs> it was truly, truly an epic day and one that I will never forget. The ending of my college story took place on a day that drives students to the end of themselves semester after semester. Final day. I had been studying and cramming with my study group until about 3 a.m. when we decided that we would snag a few hours of sleep before our 8 a.m. exam. However, I, being the young woman who walked across campus in the rain and, and was escorted by law enforcement on the first day of school, was made of tougher stuff. And I decided to stay up till 5 a.m. I stayed up until my eyes drooped and my bed sang its sweet siren song to my sleep deprived brain. <laughs> Next thing I remember is my alarm going off and my eyes opening to find out it was 8.30 a.m. I panicked. I grabbed my backpack, grabbed my shoes, and I raced like you say, go all the way across campus. And fortunately, I had a very understanding and kind instructor and was allowed to take the exam. When I look back at the beginning of my college career, a time that provided a launch pad for my pursuit of a master's degree in public health and a PhD in health promotion, I can't help but see not just one beginning, but dozens of them scattered throughout as I changed my major, changed states, and even changed um, my career path. But looking at my life now as the ending of that time, I'm very happy and satisfied with how things turned out, and I look forward to all the new beginnings yet to come. Thank you.